Okay, let's just cut straight to the chase. If the so-called layer one ETH killers have a moment, it's now. With yield farming leading a rush to DeFi protocols, the start reality performing even the most simple tasks on Ethereum has prompted outrage and doom-mongering on social media. Gas is too high, it's too slow, and people are feeling the pinch. And that's why we spent the last week heads down on an internal hackathon to build out a range of bridges and synthetic asset protocols, all of which can be found on our GitHub. Now, I was personally attached to the Rainbow Bridge team, and our task was to see if we could build a Harmony native version of a proposal put forward by Near Protocol to bridge assets between themselves and Ethereum. And we learned a huge amount in the process. Simply put, a bridge allows an asset on one chain to be represented as an asset of equal value on another one and take advantage of the resources to be found there. The big question is not why would anyone use another layer one protocol, but why would anyone use blockchain at all? And the key thing is, is it really a truly open and permissionless platform that everyone can develop and come and build a value that would occur over time? And bridge is the answer. Connecting with other chain is just the first step of connecting with all the other financial infrastructure as well as product that users use every day, whether fiat gateways, whether about payment system, whether about digital channel, if you go to a convenience store. So Bridge is really Harmony first step to show that it's not just Harmony technology that is possible for the new applications that Harmony actually work with um, the rest of the world. This is a bit of a loose metaphor, but it helps to think of it like the Eurozone. A European passport will allow you to travel freely between countries using the same currency wherever you go. The cost of goods will be different depending on the country you find yourself in, but you're working with currency whose value you understand. And you'll also encounter infrastructure you're familiar with, like going to, say, a McDonald's, as well as being exposed to new offerings that are unique to the territory you've traveled to. Now that all becomes a lot harder if you're, for instance, British. Yeah. Now, a bridge is a pretty easy idea to sell, but implementing it and building it out in the way Near proposed is a pretty stiff technical challenge. Fortunately, we had a crack engineering team led by Jackie, who were very much equal to the task. Now, Jackie, this is one of the hardest parts of the hackathon because for other projects, there were existing um, protocols, existing actual built code that we could look at and say, okay, we can do this, this, this. But for us, we just had a thesis. We just had a, a an article that stated what the idea was, but nothing to really look at and see how it worked. How did you approach the problem? We just did some research and as the research goes on, we just discover, hey, there is something that we can build. And then we just approach nearer and nearer and finally we got this final solution. It's about um, a mutation of the design plan at the process. Obviously, Near is a different protocol to us and it has differences in the way it did things. But what were the things that were the same or what were the things that were different that you needed to, to think about? Basically, the, all the design ideas behind Near is still available, like the light kind of relay, like all the uh, verification proof, and that can all be obvious. Uh, the ideas can be reusable in our project. However, the code is totally not because here they are using uh, their Rust implementation and also the Solidity implementation is quite different. So um, most of the code we just uh, write ourselves. Can you explain to me what's so special about this bridge that you built as opposed to the, the BNB bridge that was built? So the BNB bridge, uh, bridge build, they are sitting on top of the validators. Um, because you have to trust that most of the bridge are benign and they are behave normally. This is the um, basically the trust you put into this uh, into the BMV bridge. However, for us, our ultimate goal is to build a trustless bridge. I know, and it's also permissionless. That was the other part, wasn't it? It had to be trustless and permissionless in order to function. What, what's the difference between the two when when, when we think about these two? essential decentralized components. For trustless, it, it means that all the validation are implemented in the Solidity code. So you do not have to uh, trust anything other than the pro uh, other than the code itself. This is about trustless. On the other, uh, other hand, permission is about you don't need anyone's permission to get into this network. Like BNB, like USDT, we do not ha have to ask their permission for it. We just direct for their tokens and their token goes to Harmony. That's the 
best part of this project, I believe. We've got a very fast car on our end, but the Ethereum car is still slow. Is that still a bottleneck for assets to cross? And, and is that still a, an area where there's a high cost? Uh, actually, yes. And uh, for each transaction, there can be several transactions happening on both the Ethereum and the Harmony. So the total time cost, uh, cost is about, uh, for, uh, for an example, if you are porting from Ethereum to Harmony, there are two transactions happening on Ethereum and one transaction happening on Harmony. So the total time cost will be two Ethereum transactions plus one Harmony transaction. The time cost for Harmony transaction is almost negligible, which is only five seconds. But for the Ethereum part, you can never tell that how many times you are going to use. Like you can wait for minutes. This is, I think, is the bottleneck because it's the sum of these uh, transactions. Yeah. And we remember when we were talking about it, we were looking at um, the there wasn't a, there was a way to do a fully trustless transaction. Um, but it was going to cost a ton in gas fees. Can you just remind me of, of what we talked about and, and where we got to with that? So you could, there was a small piece of trust you had to give up, and you could do it fast and cheap. But then there was a fully trustless, but it was going to be super expensive. This is about uh, about the fully trustless light client implementation. Like I said, uh, light client is only the trust part of our protocol, and trusted trusted light client just consume very few gas fees because all the data are. Uh, are existing on chain and you just have to compare it with your data to do the validation on the other hand for trustless implementation you have to you may be yeah we are still seeking for more uh, design ideas for this but one solution is that you maybe have to do the verification of your signature keys uh, which is the consensus of our chain we have to do that on ethereum this can cost a lot of gas and um, potentially, this is the cost of to building a fully trustless bridge. Is there anything else you want to tell people about in the engineering part? Because this is, you know, we want to geek out on the, the techie part, the code part. So are there any insights you have for us? The only insight part is decentralized is not that hard. It's easy, actually. Actually, oh. figure it out, it's just, uh, you, know, you know what, if you just don't know how decentralized goes, it's super hard. However, if you get into this, you know about it, you know the implementation and you try to um, find a solution for a certain problem. And you will finally see that decentralization is available. So here it is, the fully functioning rainbow bridge from Ethereum to Harmony going both ways. It's deployed on the test net at the moment and here you can see the process is sped up, but we will be posting the real-time version soon and you can have a play with the bridge itself by following the link in the description. It's important to remember that this is not a zero-sum game. There is a cost to sending an asset across the bridge, but that initial setup cost should be a small price to pay for the advantages of operating in a low-cost environment with, say, five-second finality. And of course, the longer you spend there, rather than on the costlier original chain, the greater the savings. As a layer one, our challenge is to ensure that the grass really is greener on the other side. Now, in our previous hackathon, we built out Harmony native versions of the most popular DeFi protocols. And with fully functional bridges in place, we can now open the door to any ERC-20 token project or protocol to take advantage of a fully sharded proof-of-stake blockchain right now. <laughs>